Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome, come on in. Hey, I'm so glad to see you here. I'm John Meese, I'm your host today for this workshop and the, your instructor, and Annette is my lovely co-host, as usual. Come on in, welcome, welcome. Uh, as you're popping in, at this point, this is just webinar standard <laughs> or workshop standard. As you're popping in, if you would, pop in the chat, say hello. Um, let us know where you are, where you're from. Um, and then I'd love to hear kind of, I usually love to see if we can make it, it's pretty cool if it becomes an international training right away. That's kind of my personal goal. But of course, we take our Americans as well. Hey, Jason from Colorado Springs. Good to see you again, Jason. Um, hey, Sharon, I see you there. Good to see you. Uh, oh, there we go. Morgan May in Mexico City. See, it didn't take long. So I try to, I, it's not, it's just like a personal goal for me. It's like, I try not to start until we're international. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you so much. Let me just, I'm going to go ahead and put my phone on do not disturb. I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, this is going to be a highly, uh, interactive workshop, but also a highly intense workshop in terms of the things that you're learning today are going to be key for you to put into practice in your business. Um, and so I want to encourage you to fully focus, uh, but like I'm doing the same. I just turned my phone on disturb and now I'm hiding it out of sight. Uh, fun fact, there was a study done on college students. They found that they actually scored less on their tests if they could see their phone, even if it was off. If they could literally see it, it took some of their brain space. So if you can, try to get that out of sight. Um, That's true. You know what I do, too, is I, you know, when I need to focus, I take everything off my desk. Hmm. Even if I yeah. just have to put it all in a pile and stick it underneath or something so I can't see it, it's that same effect that you were just talking exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome to today's workshop. Today is a wisdom and wealth workshop focusing on how to teaching you how to build a thriving online education business. We're going to be getting started in just a moment. I know there's people still uh, joining and coming in. So welcome. Welcome. Um, Annette, would you mind? I see there's other people kind of joining in because because we, we've turned off a little alert noise, uh, which means we, we need to make sure that we let people in even when they do join. OK, that. yes, I see someone here. Yeah. Thank and you. I was just noticing Mia, you're in Rock Hill, um, South Carolina, right? That's close to where you are right now, right, Annette? Yeah, I am. I'm in a hotel room at the moment in Columbia, South Carolina. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I should say I am in, at the moment, I'm in Tennessee. I'm in Spring Hill, Tennessee, which is just outside of Columbia, which is the mule capital of the world, as I'm sure you all know. Um, you know, so not, not quite the competition it was once upon a time, but we still have 300,000 people come to town for Mule Day every year. And it's actually, this <laughs> it's uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow's Mule Day. Uh, oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, you don't need to know that, but now you do. Uh, I'm welcome. So I'm going to go. Yeah. What were you going to say, Annette? Oh, I was just going to say, I just noticed it's a bit chillier here that normally I hail yes. from Sarasota, Florida. And uh, rather cool <laughs> here in comparison. Yeah, it's cold here too. It's uh, well, it's got up to 53 degrees now, but it was like 40 earlier. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna go ahead. I don't want to penalize the prompt, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get started right away. Um, Annette um, is my co-host, so all of you, you can see by the way, this is not like a informal automated webinar. This is like set up like a meeting, so I can see your faces, you can see me. Uh, there'll be plenty of time for us to talk and interact, and so I'm I'm your host for today. So I'm gonna walk through and kind of and walk you through this this training, but I I want to encourage you. Um, to keep the comments and the questions coming in the chat. I love that. Um, it helps just kind of keep the energy going with the with the workshop. And so we're going to be talking today about how to build a thriving online education business. And at the end, there's going to be dedicated time for Q&A. So I probably won't stop the workshop too often to answer questions live. We'll probably just save those. So Annette, as my co-host, will make sure to make note of your questions. But that means drop your question the minute you have it. So that way, once we get to the Q&A at the end, we've already got a queue so we can work through and help you implement this. So you're here, so I assume you know to some extent who I am, but I, I don't want to make too many assumptions here. So, hey, I'm John Meese. Uh, I am the your workshop leader for today, and I'm also the founder of Sell Your Smarts, uh, Sold Out Coach Club, as well as the author of award-winning, best-selling books like Survive and Thrive, How to Build a Profitable Business in Any Economy, including this one, and Always Be Teaching, 50 Illustrated Insights on How to Grow Your Business by Creating Content Online. I'm also writing two more books, which will be published later this year. Now, for more than three years, this is how a lot of people know me. For more than three years, I ran a massive membership site called Platform University until I helped Michael Hyatt sell that to Pete Vargas in 2020. Now, I've sent more than 10 million newsletters to more than 100,000 inboxes with my name in the front. That's a stupid amount of email. 
By design, those email newsletters have led to millions of dollars in sales for online education products like courses, books, and memberships for myself and my clients. And just as last year, my clients earned more than $1 million from new group coaching programs alone. So here's what really matters though, outside of that, right? Like the business stuff is good. There's my, there's my credibility sheet. I hope that helps. But also I, this is who I am outside of that, which is that I'm happily married to my best friend and high school crush, Rachel. And together we have four beautiful boys. Now, when you build your own thriving online education business, you get to earn a lucrative living from your life lessons while enjoying the freedom that brings. But that doesn't just mean freedom to take your family to live in Puerto Rico for a year, like we just did. It also means freedom for when life happens. It also means you have the freedom to show up when life happens, because it will. It's because of this business that I had the freedom to spend countless hours with my dad during the last years of his life when he was battling cancer and to look him in the eyes and say goodbye with him to, with love face to face as he died. It's because of this business that I was still able to support my family when I shattered three bones in my ankle so I couldn't walk or drive for months and I had to get screwed back together with titanium plating. Life happens. You've got your own version of this, right? Life, death, it's part of what we all experience. And what I love about building an online education business is that it, it allows you to support that lifestyle. So when life happens, you still have that extra freedom to be there and to show up when it matters. Now, beyond the freedom, building an online education business is an incredible opportunity to impact other people. I myself am a little uh, <laughs> addicted at this point to collecting testimonials. And so if you were to look at my website, you'll see I have a list of over 200 testimonials now that are on that website. And I have more that I haven't added to the list. I get the incredible opportunity to teach the teachers. And so um, it's a little special because when I teach one person and they go out and build an online education business and impact hundreds or thousands of people, uh, I do take at least partial credit for that. Um, but regardless, whatever it is that you're teaching, your expertise is, then you have the incredible opportunity to teach the teachers as well. Uh, not to teach the teachers, but to make impact. Sorry. I would love it, actually, if you would just pop in the chat and let me know, what is your impact that you're hoping to have? A lot. We can think about this as your industry. You can think about this as who you want to help, uh, what problem you want to solve, or what your experience is. But I would love to know, is it um, is it helping people lose weight? Is it helping people make money? Is it helping people have happier marriages? If you would drop in the chat, whatever it is that you're hoping to, the impact is that you'd like to have on other people through your business, I would love to know. And that gives me an idea of who, what we're talking about today. Um, so I know Sharon's on here. I, I know Sharon, uh, you, I will, I'd love to hear how you describe it, but she has a really unique approach to a real estate investing that she teaches that is really fascinating. Uh, Jason said, helping experts and coaches stand out in the world so they can transform more folks. Amazing. Raphael said, helping, helping innovators build better healthcare products that amplify health equity. That is, that's, that's so important. And it's also one of those things that has this dramatic, multifaceted impact, right? Because you have the first level and you have more and more impact even after that. Um, and so please keep that coming in. I'm going to keep going with our presentation for today uh, for the workshop. But yeah, Sharon, she said, I teach real estate investors how to work with folks' properties that are in probates. They can go on with their life. So this helps both investors and families that need to get rid of some property. Uh, Morgan says, I help high power women reconnect to their feminine energy and find love. Love that. So there's so many different ways you can help people with an online education business. I myself, what, I mean, I shared a little bit about kind of what make what my life makes possible for me here. Also, there's an awkward little plus sign right in front of my face that I'll have to fix later. Um, but <laughs> I didn't start here. Nobody starts. I mean, and we all start at ground zero. We all start in the same place. I remember, it's been nearly a decade, but I remember the first time that I made Swiss dollars in 2015. That is the term that my friend Dan Miller coined for sales while I sleep soundly. Sales while I sleep soundly, Swiss dollars. Uh, let me know in the chat if you want Swiss dollars. And I think I already know the answer, but yes, Swiss dollars are special. There's something really powerful about making sales while you sleep soundly. So nearly a decade ago, I launched my first online course and I woke up the next day to see two cha-ching notifications for $247 each and then another $327 sale while I worked out at the Each cha-ching meant I got to help someone new, but it also meant freedom because my wife was 30 weeks pregnant with her firstborn son at the time, who you can see now here in this picture. Building an online education business changed my life and spoiled me so I couldn't go back to old-fashioned work. That is what I'm here to share with you today's workshop on how to turn wisdom into wealth. I'm going to teach you how to build a thriving online education business, but I'm going to tell you right now, I already know the most common reasons that people fail. 
I want to help you with this right out of the gate because I want to help you do this so you can build a thriving online education business without going broke or burning out. Those are the two most common reasons that people fail at this. Sure, there's marketing options, there's tactics, there's strategies, there's paid ads or social media. There's a lot of different tactics and strategies that go into building an online education business. But the reality is that there, there are always more courses you can buy to learn insider secrets and tactics. But at the end of the day, most people who fail to build an online education business do so because they went broke or they burnt out and they just give up. Over the last decade, I have watched thousands of smart professionals build hundreds of online education businesses, but many more walk away from that and give up on it. But I want you to succeed. I want you to do this and commit to it. Uh, and I want to do. I want to help you build this business without going broke or burning out. So today I'm going to teach you three things that people do, which is why they go broke or burn out. And I want to really emphasize for you. I want you to uh, stop doing those three things. <laughs> and the first one of those is to stop selling medicine. And I'll explain what I mean here. So let's just imagine. I mean, today is a cold day in Tennessee, but let's imagine it was a hot day. And I'm walking down the street, and as I'm walking down the street in the hot sun, I start to feel a little kind of a little sweaty, and then I'm starting to kind of breathe a little heavier, and then I realize, oh man, it's kind of hard to breathe. Like I'm wheezing. Like I'm a little. This is a little nerve wracking. Like what is going on here? So if I ask my wife or to drive me, or if I jump in the car and go down to the closest urgent care clinic, and I sit down with the doctor and I say, Doc, look, I'm just having trouble breathing. I'm not sure what's going on, but like I'm kind of freaking out here. Like what is happening? And if he looks at me as most online teachers do, and says, albuterol, he's lost me. I don't, it, at this point, I am more confused. I, am, I don't feel safe. I feel afraid. I feel scared. But what I really, the thing is, he's an expert, right? He's an expert in his field. He knows that I am exhibiting all the symptoms of exercise-induced asthma. He knows that I need to have an inhaler right away, which is going to give me immediate relief. And he knows that the most common prescription medication used in an inhaler is albuterol. But I don't know any of that. What I need is I need him to look at me and not say albuterol. I need him to look at me and say, don't worry, I can help you breathe again. That's the difference between selling the medicine and selling the cure. You need to do the same thing. Because you have your own things that you're an expert in, that you're deep in, that when you talk about it, you don't even realize how much you talk about the medicine but all your customers want is the cure. Your solution, what that you offer, your business here, it is not climbing up a mountain or pushing a rock up a hill. It's not the work that has to be done. Your solution that you offer, it's the summit. Sometimes people will make this mistake by promising that a program will give you templates, exercises, homework, or secrets, but your promise is not about the means, it's about the end. It's about how, what actually happens once they've already gone and transformed into this future version of themselves. This is what you're offering. The promise you are selling people is the future version of themselves that they desire. Now, look, you know there's work involved in this, right? No one's pretending like there isn't. Whatever it is, the transformation that you offer people, there is work involved in making that transition. But <laughs> the reason why this is mistake is so common is because you see the whole iceberg. You have this perspective where you know everything that people need to achieve the transformation that you're trying to help them do. But just like that doctor, you have to pause and recognize the fact that your job is to see the whole iceberg. All you need to do is to tell is to sell people what they want and then give them what they need. If you try to convince people what they need, you will lose people's attention. You will lose people's trust and you will lose customers. Instead, you need to focus on selling people what they need and then give them what they want once they've already committed to that. That's why it's so important to stop selling medicine and start selling the cure. The second change you need to make is to stop selling time. Now time, hello again, also known as life, is the most precious resource you own. You get 24 hours per day, and you spend a third of that with your eyes closed if you have good sleeping habits. If you're working an average schedule, that means you only have about 2,000 working hours per year. So why would you base your inflow of wealth on the most precious, priceless, irreplaceable resource you own? Selling time limits your growth. If you invest one more hour meeting with one more client, you can grow your revenue by the price of one appointment, and it's the same with the job. Now, instead, you need to start selling promises. 
When you're building an online education business, every product is simply that. Your product is a promise for a price. Selling product opens your business to limitless growth, where if you invest one more hour in selling one product, you can grow your revenue by the price of one product or 10 products or thousands. This is about working smarter, not harder, by disconnecting your income ceiling from your finite time. And this is why it's so crucial that you do not have an hourly rate. But it's not just about your hourly rate because selling time actually shows up in many other ways too. A lot of it is how you talk about your products. If you pitch a course and you tell me, hey, it has 16 hours of training and it comes with a 30 page PDF workbook. And it's got, if you start listing all of those right out of the gate, that tells me that you're selling time. You're not selling the promise. If I, you don't buy a copy of one of my books because it's 200 pages of off-white paper with black ink on it. You buy it because this book can teach you how to build a profitable business in any economy, including this one. You buy it because of the promise. Okay, but then how do you sell the promise? What kind of promise can and should you make? Good questions. You can earn a lucrative living sharing life lessons you've already learned, but to figure out which life lessons are useful, I want to encourage you to stop and think. And this is real life questions for you to think about on your own. What do friends and family ask you about when they need help? What are you passionate about? What do you spend your free time learning and doing? What knowledge and experience have you collected, perhaps without realizing it, in your professional career? I'm going to encourage you to brainstorm a master list in two categories, pulling from your personal and professional past. Now, some of this you already have clarity on, so I want to encourage you to set aside time to do this in more detail on your own. But you want to look for two things, knowledge and experience. Knowledge is what facts or formula, formulas do you understand which you could teach someone. Experience is what have you done that you could teach someone else to execute. Once you've made that list, your job is to connect the knowledge and experience, look for places where they overlap, where they fit together, because that's where you've built up wisdom, which can start earning you wealth that you can spend. Wisdom is knowledge plus experience. Now, because of the curse of knowledge, you probably don't know how much you already know because you know it already, you know? Knowledge without experience is known as book smarts and typically hoarded by armchair philosophers and career politicians. Experience without knowledge is known as street smarts and is often racked up by criminals or spray and pray entrepreneurs. When you have both book smarts and street smarts, you have wisdom. This is really key to understand. Some people try to sell just knowledge or just experience without the other, but that is a mistake. To really teach wisdom, you need to come in there and knowing that you have both knowledge and experience. Now, once you've done that, it doesn't matter if you think your knowledge and experience is boring, common, or obvious. When you have collected both knowledge and experience, you have wisdom. And with wisdom, you can share insight. Now, insight is information that is filtered through wisdom. And here's the good news. The age of information is over but the age of insight has only just begun. Now, I have a pretty nerdy background as an economics student who then went to work for an economics research lab before I got into this whole entrepreneurship thing. And so I still follow a lot of economic publications pretty closely. And in 2020, the World Economic Forum announced that the age of information was over. Now, I don't know about you, but like a lot of people in 2020 were pretty distracted and weren't really thinking about, hmm, is the age of information still going on? And so that news definitely got missed by a lot of different people. But think about it. That's the equivalent of you in the Stone Age missing the memo and the fact that the Bronze Age has begun, where you're still out there using stone tools that are falling apart and shipping while other people are walking around with bronze axes getting work done. It's so critical that you recognize the shift that's already happened. The age of information was characterized by access to information, hence the name, by the fact that before the age of information, there were secrets, tips, and techniques, and uh, trade secrets, and things like that that were sitting locked in the desk of someone who had it. But then since the 80s, we've seen this increasing amount of information that we all have access to. You and I have access to almost everything you could possibly know through the internet. But we spend most of our energy ignoring it. To be here right now, you're ignoring text messages, emails, <laughs> headlines, news reports, research studies. You're ignoring massive amounts of information just to be here right now. And that's what characterizes the shift to the age of insight. And this is why experts are so critical by having wisdom-based businesses is so critical. Because insight is when you take one person who has genuine experience, knowledge and experience in their field, and they take all the information that's coming through and they give you the one answer you can trust. 
You don't need 3,000 ways to train your dog. You, you need one way that you can trust. And that comes from a person, a single person. The rise of AI is actually related to this because what the rise of AI represents is the fact that there's this hunger for insight. And so now there's all these artificial tools that are creating artificial insight that are taking 100,000 possible answers or 100 million possible answers and giving you one. But there's a human touch that you alone can't provide. Where your insight can offer a real solution to a real problem for real people, you can make a compelling promise that will attract paying customers and create wealth that you can spend. Now, you do try to get clear on which problem you're going to solve, but here's the good news. Now, I've heard the same song that you have, but there's only three problems. There's not 99, there's three problems. With your wisdom inventory in hand, you need to pick a problem to solve. There, the three problems are, I wish I was healthier, I wish I was wealthier, and I wish I was happier. Now, obviously, those are big picture problems to solve. But this is the first question I want to ask for you, and I'd encourage you to answer this in the chat as well as in your own notes, which is, which of those three do you wish to focus on? Do you wish to help people become healthier, wealthier, or happier? I'll take a sip of my coffee while I wait your answers. I know some of you, like Sharon, what you do is more is very obviously wealthier. Yeah, you pop that in right away. And I want to encourage you, if you're stuck on this, the truth is you will have some impact in all three of these areas. So take what I do, for example. I help people turn their wisdom into wealth. Well, the word wealth is right there, right? I help people become wealthier. But guess what happens? When you become wealthier through that work that we're doing together, you also become happier because you are now have more freedom in your life. You are now able to control your resources. You're now able to control your time. Uh, and beyond that, you're also allowed to be healthier now because you can have less stress. You can control your schedule and make sure that you take care of your physical fitness and your diet. So you can have a multifaceted impact here, but it's really critical that you pick one right out of the gate because if you don't, you run the risk of being that financial advisor that you go and sit down with and you say, okay, let's talk about how to manage my portfolio and grow my wealth. And then he says, okay, but yeah, real quick, we have a new offering in the office. We're doing a weight loss challenge. So I'm actually also a licensed nutritionist. And the minute that he says that, you get your whole you get confused. Not only are you confused about why your financial advisor is recommending giving you health advice, you actually begin to trust him less as a financial advisor because he's not committed to his lane and to his field of expertise and mastery in that. Um, so Mia, you said some aspects of all three, but healthier first, good as long as you have clear on that first one. Um, and yeah, Sharon, like you pointed out, there's going to be also more time for health as you get clear on the wealthier. Uh, that's great. So you will have some impact in all three of these areas, but you do need to pick one right out of the gate. Okay, so. Here's the big promise that your whole online education business is built around. It is called your core promise. This is why people follow you. This is why people learn from you in the first place. You may want to screenshot this. You need to craft a single sentence that describes your core promise, starting with the framework, I help real people solve real problem with real solution. Now, personally, I help smart professionals like you turn wisdom and wealth by building a thriving online education business. That is what brought you here today. But that is the umbrella promise for what I do. It's not enough to help you make a purchasing decision. For that, each product should have its own specific promise that fits within the overall umbrella of your core promise as well. Let me explain. I work behind the scenes in online education businesses earning as much as $20 million per year. And I've also helped create multiple six-figure online education businesses from scratch. Time and time again, I have seen the same three core products show up as the key to success in this business model, and each needs its own distinct promise. Your gateway product is a painless purchase for your customers that gives them a quick win. This often looks like a book or a workshop, but the main goal of your gateway product is to create customers, not cash. That's because a customer is five times more likely to buy your product than a lead. Your goal with a book, workshop, or other gateway product is to give people an effortless option to take a chance on you so that you can show them your ability to help them solve a real problem that they have in their life. The most important part here is that it's a simple promise and a no-brainer price, because even with a gateway product, you cannot sell something that solves a problem people don't care about. You need to find their pain, show that you understand it, and offer the cure. With a gateway product, your goal is to make a 10% promise, something that can improve the health, wealth, or relationships of your target customer that does not require a massive, life-changing amount of time and money invested. 
You want this to be believable to give your target customer hope and to offer a quick win once they buy. Something like lose pound five pounds in five days, right? If you were building a health, a fitness brand, and you were telling me, hey, John, I can teach you how to lose five pounds in five days. Very believable. I'll probably pay you five bucks for that. That's a very simple promise. There's, you're probably just going to tell me to drink more water and stop eating dairy, but that's fine. It's a simple change that I can make that's going to help me get that result. Now, when you get this right, your gateway product opens the door for a line of incoming customers, many of whom will buy your other products after they enjoy your gateway product experience. Now, it doesn't always have to be $5 just because it's a gateway product. Here's an example of a gateway product that Michelle Gifford created, where she created a product that for $97, that is a, it's a masterclass on how to get your next 1,000 followers on Instagram. And in the first month that she sold this gateway product, she had 54 customers that not only bought this, but actually upgraded to join her membership product as soon as they bought the masterclass. So that meant she immediately learned, earned $6,914. But because most of that was recurring revenue, she will earn another $31,752 per year from those customers, even if she never promotes those products again. Isn't that crazy? For that one product? For that one promotion? Now, that's how we, now we're going to talk about membership product, right? Because that's how she got the, all of those other results. Your membership product is a community-focused experience that provides the solution to an infinite problem, typically for a monthly or an annual fee. Now, membership creates recurring revenue for you, but it also keeps your best customers engaged on an ongoing basis. To sell a membership, you need to make an infinite promise. In other words, you want to help solve a problem that never goes away. We all have infinite problems. Think about it. When are you done getting into better shape physically or managing your diet? When are you done building well? Last night, my wife and I went on a date night. And can you imagine if at the end of the date night, I said, hey, honey, tonight's date night was great. So since we're happy now, uh, no more date nights. We're done, right? We've already checked the box on relationship satisfaction. You think that would have gone over well? No. The reality is we all have imminent problems, problems that do not go away. I need to improve my relationship being one of them. So here's a real life example of a membership product that Jill Savage created called Easy Date Nights. And here you can see the promise right here for her program. Want to fall in love with your spouse over and over again? Spark laughter, love, and friendship with fun date nights designed to deepen communication, ignite romance, and strengthen your connection. This membership pro product generates thousands of dollars in recurring revenue every month for Mark and Jill Savage who have this business. That's an example of a membership product of the promise for that product. I want you to look at all these promises as examples of how you can think about your own product being, notice what it doesn't say here, right? It doesn't say you're gonna get some tips and tricks or you're gonna get like a list of date ideas. You're gonna get, it's, it's not telling you the medicine, it's telling you the cure. Now your premium product is the most important product in your useful product portfolio. Your premium product is an all-in experience that delivers the best of your training in a transformational program that requires an identity shift, typically in a group coaching program with a premium fee. Now, here's an example from Mike Pacchione. He's got a program called Speech Club, and I'm actually, I'm in this program as a, as a student, as a client. His program, his premium program, has the promise that you will create an unforgettable signature talk that earns instant trust with any audience. It's a $6,000 program, but if you're the right person for this program, that is a steal. It's worth that and more because of what that makes possible for me as a person, but also for my business. So that's an example of a premium program. And then you kind of see how these three start to play together now. As for pricing, I recommend you do start by estimating the value of the promise you're making to your target customer. And then as much as possible, charge about 10% of that. Your goal here is to make a compelling promise that your target customer truly desires, so that they are happy to pay for your product. And in their mind, they're walking away with 10 times the value of what you charge. Now, pricing is equal parts art and science, but I do find this is a good place to start. When you combine all three of these, you have an online education ecosystem that allows you to serve customers at different levels of desire, transformation, and price. Your gateway product funds your audience growth, your membership product funds your infrastructure, and your premium program funds your lifestyle. Now, I'm gonna show you the math on this. When you put these all together, if you have, let's just say, for example, you get to the point where you have 1,000 customers who buy a $100 product from you. Well, that funds $100,000 in further sales and marketing, because my advice is use your gateway product to create customers, not cash. Now, if half of those customers upgrade to join a membership product for $100 a month, or maybe $1,000 per year, 
then now you have $500,000 for core operations like software and outsourcing fees. If 40 of those customers pay you $10,000 to join your premium program, you will be paying yourself $400,000 per year before taxes. Now, if you add that up real quick, from 1,000 customers, you can earn $1 million. You've got a seven-figure school. Now, a seven-figure school allows you to make a lucrative living while genuinely helping people, and you'll go to do it anywhere on the planet with the support of a small team. Of course, no one starts there. Your prices might look a bit different in this example. Nobody builds a seven-figure school overnight, but you can adjust the price of each product and the quantity of sales just a bit to reach the same total of a million dollars, and now you have something to strive for. Now, before you start launching products left and right, I do really want to tell you about my friend, Mike. Now, Mike has bipolar disorder. He has spent his adult life learning how to manage his condition and navigate the unique complications of work, relationships, and general life balance surrounded by people who don't really get what he is going through. I myself don't know much about his bipolar disorder, but he told me that he has, uh, I think it's called type one, but it's a, it's a manic experience that means that he's really unreliable in a lot of different situations. And that's how people view him. This is what he's got to live with. So he started an online education business to share what he was learning along the way because he will, he he is a high achiever and he still wanted to learn how do I function in a healthy relationship? How do I function at work? How do I get a job when I have a manic bipolar disorder? So he started a podcast. He started sharing what he was learning and interviewing experts. And incredibly, it was a hit. For three years, he published useful content on his podcast and he got incredible reviews from people who said he changed their lives World leaders started reaching out to get his input on mental health initiatives in their countries. He was recognized as a bipolar disorder thought leader. Who knew that was a category? Because that was something that he could speak about and that he had expertise with. Media companies started to interview him. CVS even created a video segment with him explaining life with bipolar disorder to their customers. So he started building a business. He started selling a gateway product called the Freedom Challenge for $29. And then he started a peace plan membership product for $30 per month. And Mike told me, I have hundreds of emails and texts from people saying they decided not to commit suicide because of the show. Can you imagine the kind of impact he was having and the kind of influence he built? Somewhere out there, there's probably a hierarchy of level of impact you could have on someone's life. And, you know, and losing five pounds is pretty low on the list. Uh, you know, quitting your day job and creating your dream job is probably somewhere in, the, somewhere in that list. But helping someone save their life is a very extreme amount of impact. Mike told me he had handwritten letters the size of a novel that he got about his business, about how his business helped someone turn their life around. But then he shut it all down. After three years of incredible impact, he still wasn't earning enough income to pay the bills. This is the dark side of online education businesses that most people don't talk about. The fact that the failure rate is incredibly high. But what I found is the reason is why the failure rate is so incredibly high is because people do what seems like the logical thing, which is they start by selling the gateway product. They start small. But I want to challenge you on behalf of Mike and everybody that's followed him. I want to challenge you to stop selling petty. Now, I want to ask you right now, what is the greatest level of transformation that you will allow your target client to experience? In other words, what is the most time and money that right now you will allow people to invest in their future? Most people start from the bottom by selling a low price gateway product and they suffer death by a thousand ebooks or they burn out before they see any meaningful profit. But right now, you have the least cust amount customers you will ever have, especially if you have zero. So why would you sell the product that requires the most customers to be successful? Honest question. This, is, this may be challenging your own perspective on how to build this business, but it's not starting with small. It's not starting petty. It's not selling the gateway products. You need to start by selling premium. Now, when you sell the premium program first, even if it's scary, even if it feels like a big leap, now all of a sudden you are leaning into the income and impact of working with a close, working with a small group of people 
for a premium fee in a premium program and using that as the core, as the unshakable core to this online education business that you're building. Now, when you sell a premium program first, it's not just about the money. It's about the fact that what you're doing here is you're casting a vision for your audience of what success looks like. So if I tell you that I have a coaching program, for example, that can help you earn $10,000 or more per month from your own sold out group coaching program, whether or not you join that program is not actually the most important thing. Just because I have defined success as you're earning at least $10,000 per month from your own premium program, now, every time you consume a free workshop, every time you read a newsletter, every time you read a book, you have that you have that in your mind and that helps you put everything into context. Now, if you're built as you're building this business, every journey is different, but here's my advice and this is the most foolproof way to build this business, to build an online education business built on these three core products. Focus on selling your premium or flagship product first and only that product until you're generating at least $100,000 in revenue. Next, Add a gateway product to grow your customer list while scaling your flagship product until you've earned a quarter of a million dollars in annual revenue. And then finally, last, add a membership product to your growing business to reap the rewards of recurring revenue while scaling your gateway and flagship product. Now, most people, when they learn this model, even if I tell them exactly what I'm telling you right now, they go out and they say, okay, but I'm going to try to build all three. Usually, that's what most people do. But Dustin Rickman is not most people. So Dustin Rickman followed my advice and sold his premium program first. So he started selling his group coaching program when he had no real audience, no real products other than some one-on-one -on -one coaching. And he was still actually working part-time as a traffic engineer. He built a list of target clients, invited them to his new group coaching program, and kept his focus on that until he was earning six figures every 90 days from his group coaching program. So I, I'm advising focus on getting the six figures with that program before you focus on the products. He took that to the extreme and said, okay, but every 90 days, um, he got to the point where he was earning six figures from his 90-day group coaching program with zero other products. And then last year was Dustin's first year working full-time on his business. And he earned, I asked him to commit the specific numbers, he earned $505,000 from 670 email subscribers. Half a million dollars from 670 email subscribers. And then March was Dustin's first $100,000 a month, last month. Now, that's incredible. That is amazing. And that's what happens when you stay focused on the strategy of selling the premium program first. But it's not just about the money. So here's another example. Jill Savage, she earned $25,000 for her first group coaching program, which is a great amount of income, um, especially from the fact that it was the first time she'd ever done it. And her and her husband taught this program, and they were building, teaching people how to establish marriage ministries as a husband and wife couple. And then they got invited to Uganda and they were asked to go train 1000 pastors and their wives in Uganda on how to launch marriage ministries in their community. This is in a country that does not value marriage culturally. It's very common, as Jill told me, it's very common for most men to have a couple of women on the side, broken families left and right. And so for them to go in and help the 1000, 1000 pastors in Uganda and their wives create marriage ministries is an incredible, mind blowing impact. Because they'd already been do, running their group coaching program, they had all the resources already created to continue to mentor, not only to teach while they were there for a week in Uganda, but actually for some of those pastors to continue to mentor them on an ongoing basis by giving them access to this group coaching program they'd already developed. Andrew Connell, he went from zero program to sold out in five weeks. And he's been very public about the fact that he was honestly at a, a bad point in his business where he had actually lost a $300,000 a year contract with Microsoft that was his bread and butter, and he needed to figure out something quick, but he had expertise. And so we worked together, and he was able to launch his own group coaching program and get to sold out in five weeks, and he's since sold out another two times since then and completely changed his whole business. Rebecca Davis doubled her price after earning $10,000 from her first group coaching program. And here's another example of someone who's having this like just monumental impact. What, what Rebecca does is she helps Christians who've gone through personal trauma personal tragedy. She helps them create transformational books and publish them. Transformational books that tell their story in a way that gives their past trauma purpose. And that's her program. And now she's launched, she has this, launches this program twice a year. Um, and this is the core part of her business. This is her bread and butter. Sean Blanc, 
he worked with me and this is someone who actually, and he'll admit he built it backwards, right? He built his whole business on gateway products and then membership products, constant launches, huge audience, always selling, you know, $17 courses and then a, you know, hundred dollar a month membership. And it was exhausting. And he had tried to launch a high ticket program or like a, a group coaching program or mastermind, but it just wasn't working. And then we were together and he was actually able to earn 10 times his investment with me by going from crickets to sold out twice. And his program is all focused on running your full-time business, working part-time hours. I'm sharing these examples to inspire you. Like, I want to encourage you. Like, this is, I think you get the memo at this point that I'm just saying, like, sell premium, <laughs> sell your premium program. It's about impact and it's about income. It's both and. And here's something that happens often that people are usually surprised by is that sometimes launching your premium program actually causes you to totally rebrand your entire business. So ST is a brain engineer who actually helps people rewire their brains for the better, but that's not something most people are looking for, right? Like, I don't know how often you've Googled what brain engineer near me. Near me. Um, and so what she found was that by focusing on selling to the high ticket clients of creating, selling a premium program, it forced her to zero in on her target client and get clear that it's ADHD entrepreneurs. And she immediately, as soon as she got that clarity, she got clients who completely ignored her before and it rebranded her entire business, not just that one product. Mike Pacquion, who I mentioned earlier, he sold out his program from one stage with one offer, one Q&A, and one email. And let me just say, Mike actually has an email list. He has an audience of a few thousand people. And he's also, um, he's the speech coach for people like Donna Miller, Amy Porterfield, uh, Tim Ferriss, James Clear, lots of incredible people. But he kind of took it as a personal challenge uh, when I worked with him to launch his group coaching program to say, well, I have one speaking event coming up. What if I can just sell it from that, sell, have a sold out program from that one event? And so he did it. He was spoken on one stage with one offer. And then he had 70 people say, I want to learn more. He hosted a Q&A and then he sold out his program with one email. So what about you? What are you going to do? That's what I want to know. So let me recap for you the, the, key, the key takeaways I hope that you take away from today's workshop, which is to stop selling the medicine and start selling the cure. Stop selling time and start selling a promise. Stop, please. Stop selling petty and start selling premium. And now we're gonna get to the Q&A in just a moment, but I'm curious before we get into that, what is your most useful takeaway from today's workshop so far? I want you to be honest here. What is your most useful takeaway of a lesson that you are that you're thinking about, that you're, you're not, maybe if you're not even sure exactly how it applies to your business yet, please share that in the chat. This exercise, by the way, the reason why I do this is this helps you activate the part of your brain that moves learning from short-term to long-term memory. When you pause and you share a most useful takeaway, it also helps re recap the most important information for everyone else who's participating in today's workshop. Um, and actually, this is a great time for me to ask my co-host and Sell Your Smarts coach, Annette, to join me on the virtual stage. And uh, Annette, I would love for you to share what are... Would you share some of the most important takeaways from today's workshop just to make sure that we don't miss anything? Yes, absolutely. You know, I was I was making some notes as you're we going along and I've heard you teach this so many times and I've seen the truth of this in action in, you know, those that you coach and teach as well as my own business. But, you know, it was just, it just really struck me again how powerful it is at this paradigm shift that you start with a premium product, you know, and this realization that we're selling time. And when we're selling time, we're really putting a lid on what we have to offer. And we wind up stressed out for that too. You know, um, can I just go, go through my list of the notes? Yeah, that made? please yeah. share some takeaways with us. And, yeah, and then I would encourage those of you as well who are listening in, please share in the chat your most useful takeaway. Right. So, do and when you talked about selling the medicine versus the cure, um, there's a mental shift that we have to make when we go through that in terms of how we present the offer. And you know, I remember I did this when I got started, and it was just like I had to catch myself over and over and hear you say it a few times to really let it sink in because we make these false assumptions that people want to know all the details and the format, like how mm -hmm. many modules and all that kind of stuff, and they don't want to know that. They yeah. just want to know the transformation and are you the one who can get me there? Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Yeah. Another one um, 
I love when you talk about how each product should have its own promise. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's really important because that made me come back and think about everything I do and everything I put out there, even my podcast, like what's the promise that I have yeah. for the podcast, you know? And when you frame it like that, then it transforms how you talk about it. Exactly. You know, you know yeah. which I love. Um, I love the simplicity of looking at everything as just those three core products, you know, your premium, your gateway, and then down the road, your membership, because mm -hmm. that just gets rid of all the noise that confuses our audience, but it also confuses us in yes. the middle of it. Um, let's see. That's great. Yeah, this other one too, this just really, really impacted me. Once again, you know, every time I've heard you tell Mike's story, um, in, with various, in various settings, um, it just, it just blows my mind. And this time you talked about it as the dark side of the online business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't hear people just being honest about that too yeah. often, you know? And so I was, I, that was so powerful that you shared that. And the fact that how preventable was that? I mean, what a tragedy to lose that impact that he was having, you know, yeah. uh, just, just heartbreaking. So those are some of the key things that I put down. That's great. Thank you. I appreciate you you're sharing that. Um, there's a few others in the chat I just want to highlight. Jason said, I love the concept of your premium offer being the ultimate promise of what you do. Good. Amazing. And then Sharon said, each product needs to have its own promise. It's a good reminder. I didn't think more mm -hmm. premium for my premium offer. Amazing. Good. Um, now, in just a moment, we're going to shift our focus to rapid fire Q&A. So please start sharing your questions, thinking about your questions, and I'm going to start answering those in just a moment. But first, I want to acknowledge that there are a lot of important topics, which honestly just, just don't fit in today's workshop. Uh, topics like why social media is a waste of time. I personally on zero social media platforms myself. I should say why it's usually a waste of time. There is a point right before it. When paid ads are dangerous versus when they are useful. How to fill your first group coaching program with five clients paying you $2,000 each. How to create a transformational 10X promise for your flagship product that attracts high paying clients. How to create a no-brainer 10% promise for your gateway products that creates quality customers and how to create an infinite promise for your membership product that gets customers to pay you automatically, as well as how to build a client creation machine to systematically attract, nurture, and sell to your target client. Exactly how to sell premium programs with one free call, a uh, customer coaching call that leads to a sale. Um, how to find invisible people when your target client doesn't want to be found. How to get paid by your customers to create training for them so you can sell uh, before you build. And so here's my invite, in, invitation for you. Yes, we're about to focus on rapid fire Q&A, but I know you're gonna leave with unanswered questions and public Q&A doesn't always address the nuance of your specific situation. So my team and I have reserved time on our calendars to meet with you for one-on-one -on -one coaching just this coming week. So here's what I ask. Um, and that's gonna drop the link in the chat. Click the link in the chat to schedule a coaching call while we still have appointments available. Now you'll see as soon as you do click that link and go in there, there's a limited amount of slots because this is real time on our calendar, you know, for this coming week. Uh, when you do this, uh, I invite you to schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching call um, with my team of Sell Your Smarts coaches so we can learn about your goals, your unique situation, and help you get clarity in your next steps so you can build your own thriving online education business. I also want to point out, when you click the link in the chat, while we still have appointments available, you will see the option there, it's built into it, to pay a 100% refundable deposit to be with an experienced coach, to share your goals and learn if or how we can help. Now, we will help you get clarity right there on the call. And then if you were a good fit for a coaching program, you can apply your deposit to your enrollment fee. But otherwise, your deposit will be refunded to you after your coaching call. And it's 100% refundable for any reason. If either you or we decide you want it back. The coaching call itself is complimentary. I want to emphasize that. The reason why we did the deposit is this makes sure everyone shows up fully engaged with skin in the game so that even though this is a complimentary coaching conversation, we're all taking it seriously. So click the link in the chat to schedule your coaching call while we still have appointments available. Um, and, you know, maybe you've already picked up on this or especially if you followed me for a while, but one of the reasons why people end up working with me or other coaches on my team um, is because we're committed to helping teach you how to sell without losing your soul. That... To help, it, to help you get both income and impact. They're like, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to design high ticket programs, design premium programs and sell them. 
But to do that in a way, as you kind of see today from today's workshop, to do that in a way that makes the world a better place, to do that in a way that that honors your expertise and your knowledge and your wisdom. And so I just want to invite you to schedule a coaching call with our team to talk about how we can help you achieve your goals. And now, what questions do we have? So please share your questions in the chat and Annette will help me keep track of your questions so we can help you uh, right here and now. So Annette, if you could, what is the first question to start us off? Oh, I had to unmute you, Annette. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so um, the premium product, does it have a limit of your time? Like, is it monthly, weekly, quarterly, group versus in individual, that sort of thing? That's from Fran. Yeah, well, okay, so, so remember, we're not selling time, we're selling a promise, but I, I, I will also say, like, I understand, like, you have to spend time to do these things. Mm -hmm. So the specifics of how you deliver the program, it does differ depending upon who your target customer is, what your expertise is, what you're trying to teach. But I find it helpful to start with the wet clay and then mold that program based on your business. So the wet clay that I recommend that you start with across the board is that you are recruiting five clients into your first, at least your first group of coaching program. You're recruiting five clients who are paying you $2,000 each. And that's a 60 day program where you're meeting with them once a week for about 90 minutes. So once a week, 90 minutes for 60 days or two months. Five people, $2,000. Now, that's the wet clay, right? Depending upon what you're teaching, $2,000 may be not enough. Uh, 60 days might not be long enough to teach them that transformation, right? You're teaching towards a result or a promise. Um, but that's a pretty typical offer to start with. And then what most people do is they use that as the model for their first cohort. And then as they're teaching people, as they're getting paid basically to create the curriculum for the program, then they start realizing, oh, you know what? This would actually work better if it was 90 days or 30 days. Or this would work better if I had, uh, maybe I need to charge a little more for this because I want to get more support. And so it's pretty typical for people to have their first founding cohort is five people paying $2,000 each at 60 days. And then to come back around and say, okay, that was the founding member cohort. Now I'm taking 10 clients who are paying $4,000 or $5,000 each. And it's a 90 day program. And so not it's the, the answer to price is not always more, depending upon your target client and what you do, then there may be a good price point in that two to $5,000 range. Some of my clients, though, they've, they're able to deliver enough value that they're able to keep ants raising that price to the point where I have clients, I have quite a few clients who charge $10,000 uh, for a program that's a 90-day program. And then I have some clients who charge as much as $30,000 for a six-month program. Um, and I would say, actually, I'm not sure if Sharon, you're still here, um, but I would the the example that I have of so a client who's charging $30,000 for a six-month program, um, that is specifically teaching people it's very similar to what you do. It is teaching doctors how to create their own real estate investment team, like a syndicate, basically, where they're doing syndicate investment. And they charge $30,000 for a six-month program to teach doctors how to raise money for shared investments with other medical professionals. And so these are high-income earners who are really busy. Have no, and they're like, I don't know how to do passive income. I'm just working all the time, making a bunch of money, but I'm also spending a bunch of money. And so there's a really unique pain point there that they've tapped into in real estate investing. So I share that as example for you, Sharon, because I think there's probably some ideas you can take from what they're doing um, over there with that. Yeah. So great. And um, yeah, what are the questions we have? And, so, and sorry, go for it, Annette. Mia popped a question in here and she says that this is good information. I just need to figure out what would be the cure that I'm selling. And and that mm -hmm. made me think, because there's, there's a tie-in with another side of that question that people ask all the time. Which boils down to basically, what if I'm unclear of my specific audience? Yeah. Or and what she's saying here basically is, what is the outcome or that cure? You know that we're yeah putting out there. I mean, so I would start with the wisdom inventory exercise of literally just like making a master list of like knowledge and experience. Like, what are the things I know how to? What are the things I know? And what are the things I can do or have done? Um, and literally just like list those out and look for common themes there. Um, but I mean, it, your, your whole business doesn't have to be built on picking a real target person that you can serve. But like the example I shared earlier, it's actually like a real estate investment training, right? But they picked doctors as their target client. When you pick a real human being as your target client, it helps you dial into their specific situation of how does that pain point show up for them? 
If you were selling to just anybody, like, hey, here's how to get started in like investing in real estate, it would be a very different offer than if you're talking specifically to doctors. Um, and so, and they even, I mean, honestly, they may talk to a specific type of doctor. I'm not sure about that. But I would say the first step after your wisdom inventory is to kind of look around for who's a specific, this is the who you can help and pick a specific person. And the reality is you know, there's probably a lot of different categories of people you can help. But the key is to get clear and where does that pain show up in their life that you can help remove? Where does that problem show up? I and mean, what keeps them up at 2 a.m.? You know, and ideally you have such clarity in who your target customer is. You can close your eyes and walk through a day in their life of, okay, how does it, how, how do they, when they wake up in the morning, what are they worried about? You know, like at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, um, what's the text message that makes them groan? Like what, where, do, what are those little, little frictions that show up all throughout their life that you can create a narrative from? Um, so I'm happy to answer follow-up questions on that, but I hope that helps um, kind of there. And, and honestly, um, this is all, uh, I'll tell you the insider secrets here that the workshop today was only, in, you know, only a small group of people were invited to it because on Monday I'm teaching this workshop to a much larger audience. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we, we had the updated workshop had some uh, kind of a, essentially the friends and family version of the workshop today. All that, what that means is that I have extra time and capacity to do live coaching here on the call. So if your question is more complicated than a question, like if it's not a simple question and you're like, look, can you help me figure this out? Can you help me figure out what my product would be? Yes, of course, please schedule a one-on-one coaching call, but we can do a little rapid fire version of that right here if you want. And if you are interested in that, um, then please uh, let me know. You ideally click the raise your hand icon. There's like a reactions button and you can raise your hand and that lets me know um, that you want to come on screen and get some live coaching. Um, but in the meantime, Annette, what other questions do we have? Okay, so, so here's another one. And um, we hear this a lot too, this question, yeah. because there was a time way back in the day when it was all about creating courses, you know, and self-study courses. And you're talking about something very different here. Yes. So um, why, why the shift? Why, why do we do this now? Yeah. Well, courses still have their place, but when the course movement started was still the tail end of the age of information. And so what that means is that a lot of times in a course, you were sharing information that wasn't available anywhere else. You were sharing templates or tips or tricks or secrets that wasn't available anywhere else. And so the early days of selling online courses looked a lot like saying, hey, get access to 36 you know, hours of video content with 26 page PDFs. And it was a different world. In the age of insight, nobody's got time for that. <laughs> I want to watch the one 30 minute video or the, that's going to give me the, the three things I need to know right now. And so the way courses have evolved is more, here's the other thing too, is that the, the amount of money that's spent every year on the online course industry has gone up every single year, but also the amount of people who create courses has gone up every year. And so there's sort of this, this thing that's happened where now most courses are, where they, whereas it used to be courses cost 300 or 500 or a thousand or $2,000. Now, most online courses across the board cost 50 or a hundred or maybe $200 or maybe 500. It's very rare you see a course today for more than $500. Um, and I, I think that part of that is also just the evolving nature of the fact that courses have become a really great gateway product. And the fact that you can sell a, if you, if you have a, if you have this system in place, which is a lot of people have this system, when you have a system in place with different products there, you can do really well selling a $50 course if that brings someone into your world and causes them to join another program that's $2,000 or more um, and then allows you to impact them on a deeper level. So I think there's a couple different shifts that have happened. Some of that's just the ma the industry maturing because it was sort of like the gold rush for a while. Uh, like anybody with a $2,000 course is going to make money. Um, but now less so. Um, here's the thing too. When you're teaching a group coaching program as your premium program, it doesn't have to stay a group coaching program forever. So there are people who, who over time, their premium program becomes more like a course um, in some ways. It's just a lot, not positioned as a course usually, but more of the content is recorded and delivered out that way. That's fine. Um, but I don't want you to go through all the work of, of creating and producing a super massive complicated course before you've generated revenue for it. I want you first to make sure that we're talking, we're actually talking to your target customer and we're getting, pardon me, feedback from them, not just in the, in the not just feedback in the terms of them saying, here's what I want or here's what I want differently, but actually feedback in the form of someone saying, here's my money. <laughs> But that's the ultimate feedback you get is when someone buys the promise that you're offering them. Um, maybe it's not the ultimate feedback, but it's it, it's it's at least the first level of them becoming a customer. And then do they give you a referral? That's probably a more extreme le level of uh, feedback mm -hmm. when they start sending other customers your way. Yeah. And it seems like people have changed their expectations 
you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're like up to here with courses that they've never finished yeah, the exactly. best intention, but they didn't, you know, and that doesn't serve them and it doesn't give you any testimonials <laughs> to share with others, you know? Yeah. So people really do look nowadays for that sort of let's do this together kind of thing. And they're willing to pay. It's not the content. It's it's being with you and experiencing what you have to offer and walking through that with you. That makes all the difference in the world for people. Yeah, that's great. Um, no, I totally agree with all that. Um, just want to call this out one more time. If you haven't yet, click the link, schedule your one-on-one uh, coaching call. Um, and you know, with me and my team. Um, then I saw some people have already reached out to me uh, to about like, like DM me about meeting one-on-one and that's awesome. But Calendly makes it a lot easier just to manage that. So just, if you would click through that and schedule that, um, just to get your one-on-one coaching call, then that'd be great. Um, yeah. So what are the questions y'all have? How can I help? So what about someone, John, who they're new to this, there might not be new in their field, but they're new to putting this into their own business. And maybe Mm -hmm. they don't have a following. They don't have a website. They're, you know, the first thing they think yeah. about is tech stuff, which feels overwhelming. Like, is it realistic in that kind of scenario to start with a premium product? Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, I think it's the only way is to start with a premium program product because I just see like the failure rate of any other strategy being just so high. I mean, I've just seen when I ran Platform University, you know, we had a we had more than twenty five thousand customers who were who had gone through our membership. They weren't all current, right? We had thousands of current members. We had more than 25 customers who got into the program. And that was a $50 a month membership. So not a high cost investment, but massive value add. I mean, we would spend six figures on a video shoot to fly best-selling authors into a studio and interview them on how they built their business and teach them. Every single person I knew inside of Platform Mercy was a member, was incredible, an incredibly smart professional. They had it, usually they had a couple decades of experience in their industry and in their field, uh, whether it be as a you know, as an investor or as a nutritionist or as a coach or, you know, whatever that industry was, they had decades of experience and we had thousands of members and dozens of success stories, right? Thousands of members, dozens of success stories. We mostly talked about the success stories, but I was very aware of the math of the fact that it was a really tiny percentage. And that's kind of what set me on this path of figuring out like, what's going, what is wrong? And that's what really honestly led me to landing on the conclusion that we need to start by selling the premium program first. Because people would go broke or burn out and give up. Um, so, oh, and Beth, I'm, thank you for chiming in. She just said, I love Platform University and greatly appreciate the input the internet gave us. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that, Beth. Love that. Uh, so glad you're still sticking around. Follow me. Um, the, yeah, so back to the question. If you don't have an audience, I mean, that's like, Dustin is a great example of that. I mean, I think he's like the textbook example. It helps because he's a traffic engineer by trade. And so he followed like the strategy, like an engineer would of like step-by-step where's the blueprint to go. And he didn't have an audience at all. And so he figured out how to build some expertise and build some relationships. And he got booked on a couple different podcasts as a guest. Um, And from those podcast guests, literally one of those interviews, somebody was like, well, how else can people work with you? And he was like, oh, (laughs) because he didn't even have a website yet. And he was like, "Um, yeah, just email me. So he just gave out his email address on the podcast and he had a couple people reach out and he ended up getting some coaching clients. And so once he had 10 one-on-one coaching clients, then he built a website and he built a premium group coaching program. And then he started saying like, this is the only way to work with me is to do this group coaching program. And that's how he built his whole business. And so, yeah, by the end of last year, which is his first year working full-time in the business, then he had a little over 600, it was like 670, I think, email subscribers. But that's not what he started with. And that's also not a lot, right? There are plenty of people who I know who have thousands of email subscribers that don't have a premium program. But he got the point last year where last year he made over $500,000 from coaching programs and with 670 email subscribers. And it's just, it's a different math. Um, mm-hmm. they, when you need five clients to fill your first program, your premium program, then uh, you don't need 500,000 email subscribers or 5,000 email subscribers. Right. You need a list of 10 people who are your target clients you can reach out to, and then you need another 10. And then you need another 10. Um, what I've seen is that typically... Honestly, my clients who crossed, um, my clients who crossed six figures from their premium program, they typically had 100 or less like people in their pipeline when they crossed that. And I'm not saying 100 customers. I'm saying 100 of their target client for their premium program. And so that's become like one of my new, one of the exercises that I do with coaching clients now is like let's make let's go ahead and start building a list of 
your target clients, like real human beings who match that description. And because once we have a list, I mean, you only need a list of 10 to start, but once you have a list of a hundred, you probably have a six figure premium program in there, multiple six figures. Um, yeah. So Sharon, I know you have a program. Do you want any live coaching on it while you're here? I appreciate that you've hung out. So I just want to give you the opportunity. Oh, I, I think I'm, I'm good. I've, I've okay. tried out a couple of things. Um, with this add on to like exactly what you said with the courses, what I found out is people mm. still buy my course, but they want more. So I've tried out a couple of different things and uh, I really have leaned into a 60 day or 90 day program, Amazing. but it kind of stuck on the pricing. I kind of was thinking 60 days, 2497, which that would be a 4997 investment, you know, total. But, um, I don't, I don't know. You know, there's definitely been a shift in the whole coaching or the whole course thing that people, yeah. they, they just want more. And what I'm finding is I offer some uh, calls, Zoom calls when they buy the course, group calls, but they, then I'm kind of losing out on, uh, you know, they're getting the help for nothing uh, for a, a yeah. time period, but they don't value it because it's free. Right. You know, so that's a, it's a catch 22. So i um, trying to figure out how to solve that problem. You know, the course is this and give them something, but then as far as yeah. ongoing coaching, you know where I'm going with this, as far as ongoing coaching, then to have, no, you have to sign up for a program. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's tricky. I think, uh, would you like some advice there? Did I make a recommendation? I'm, I'm sorry. What? Can I make a can I make a recommendation there of, of a shift that would really help sell from the course of the coaching? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't I do think people expect some element now, like or they want at least some element of coaching with courses. It's not mm -hmm. enough just to have the videos or the right. content. But what I would do personally is I would offer one free coaching call when they buy the course. Mm -hmm. And I'm on that coaching call, um, I would I would run that using the serve call framework. I don't recall, Sharon, if you have you been have I you gone through any of my trainings on how to do a serve call before? I don't think so. Okay. Um, well, we can meet one-on-one and talk about it, or I've got a, a book coming out in the next month that's all, that goes into more detail. But essentially, the one of the strategies I teach is called the serve call, and it's just, it's a it is a coaching call that is designed to lead to selling a premium program, essentially. Okay. And so it's a combination of like high ticket sales and really valuable coaching. So even people who don't buy, they walk away and go, "Wow, that was super useful." Uh um, I, do, I do remember. I do remember that now. Okay. Yeah. So that's something that I I think that if you were to just change the offer and say when someone buys the course, they get one free coaching call, they're going to think, oh, wow, I get a one-on-one -on -one coaching call, which is an awesome value add. They're going to get it for real. Like, so they're going to actually get value out of it, but it's also going to give you a chance to invite them into the premium program. Um, and that would probably dramatically improve your, uh, your upgrade rate. That's actually a great idea because if you're doing a launch, then it's easy to have a six week where it was, it was easy to have a so many calls afterwards, but yeah. on times when I've had it on evergreen, it's like a never ending scattering of stuff. And I don't like that. No, especially if they're not paying for ongoing support. Like right. it's different if they're joining a membership where there's some sort of like ongoing mm -hmm. coaching Q and a type thing. Um, right. Cause like I have, you know, op options like that, but um, yeah. Um, oh, that, that's a great idea, John. Good. Oh, that's helpful. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Sharon. And I hope we'll get to talk more soon. Um, do we have any other, either Sh Sharon or, or Annette? You know, I guess Sharon, if you have any questions, by all means, Sharon. But otherwise, uh, Annette, do we have any other questions for us to dive into right now? No, could, um, can you talk some more about the, the 10X promise? Yeah. You know, and just kind of unpack that concept a little bit more, because that is a different way of thinking about things. Yeah, so I call it the 10x promise, not because it's like there's actually any math involved per se, but it's really honestly to separate it from the 10% promise. So if you think about the fact that like if I was building a fitness program, which I'm not, I'm not credible in that category, uh, but if I was, and like if my 10% promise for my little $5 product was teach you how to lose five pounds in five days, then my 10x promise would be something dramatically different that requires an identity shift. So a really good example would be that it, it could be that I'm helping you um, – turn your dad bod into a father figure with rock hard abs. That's like, okay, that's like, that's an identity shift. Like myself with, a, with an off camera dad bod, um, I can't really imagine myself 
with the rock hard abs or the, you know, but kind of like, but redefining that identity um, can, is really a key part of the, what makes the 10X promise work? What makes it effective? So if you think back to the example I shared earlier of Mike Pacquiao and his program, create an unforgettable signature talk that earns you instant trust with any audience. Well, if you don't have that and you want that, right? If you want to earn instant trust with any audience, that's a different version of you. It's not just saying like, hey, I'm going to help you create a talk, which by the way, his program, he actually hired a program before we ever worked together, but his program was called Speech Club. And it was kind of like, I think his promise was something like, write your best speech ever. And so it sold okay. Like it worked okay. It worked. But when he made that shift to having a 10X promise and on stage saying, by the way, I have a program where I can help you create an unforgettable signature talk that helps you earn instant trust with any audience. That's when he got everybody joined. That's when he got a sold out program from one stage. So yeah, that's um, that's kind of a little more on the 10X promise, I guess I would say. Um, Annette, do you want to share the current version of your 10X promise? Do you have that handy? Uh, I'm actually completely reworking it. Okay. Because, um, and see, so here's here's the, the yeah. thing too. Just being straight up, um, what I had before was fine, but it was it wound up not attracting the actual woman that I wanted to work with. Right. You know, so for for those of you who don't know, like I, you know, I help um, Christian business women rebuild their life, their leadership, their business after narcissistic abuse. Well. I was I was attracting women who weren't necessarily business women, mm -hmm. even though in my mind I wanted to. And I realized that the promise that I had, you know, which was just like rebuild your, you know, best self alive or your best self. Yeah. Yeah. yeah your yeah. best yeah. self after narcissistic abuse. And I got a lot of women who had actually embraced a negative identity and like some victim thinking. And it was really frustrating because it was like yeah. pushing a rope help, you know, trying to help them to make changes with that. And they weren't super committed to it, you know? So, but what was really interesting is as I started digging in, I went back to the drawing board with surf calls and reaching out to these women and listened closer. Mm -hmm. And what I started discovering is there were certain qualities to the women I wanted to work with. So I was kind of like vetting them as much as they're vetting me. As, yeah. they're, as they're talking. And I wanted these women who were gritty. They'd pull themselves up by the bootstraps. They'd move forward anyway, but they felt like they were moving forward with a, a backpack of 10 ton bricks, you know, and it yeah. was like slogging through quicksand and they knew there was something wrong. They were moving forward, but it was just so hard, just so mm -hmm. hard all the time. And, you know, and as soon as I started talking in different terms, I started having these women show up. You know, yeah. so now I'm creating an entirely different um, premium product, you know, for yeah. what I'm doing. So I'm super excited about that. I'm actually revamping everything right now. That's great. That's well, that's kind of a key point. I think it's worth emphasizing about the 10X promise is that it does change over time. And that's true. The promises for all your products can, but especially for your premium program, the promise needs to evolve as you get customer feedback on what resonates with them, what's important to them, you know, what's, you know, um, so I just want to encourage um, all of you there to lean into that. That is an exercise, of course, we can help with. If you want a masterclass, not only in how to create a, a 10X promise, but also in, if you want a masterclass in surf calls, then schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me and my team. And you will see a surf call of practice just to pull back all the curtains, right? Is that that is by itself a transformational coaching call that I've gotten thank you messages, thank you videos, mess emails. I don't think handwritten letters, but I've gotten thank you messages from people who've gone through that process and walked away, even if they didn't become a customer, um, because of just how valuable that experience was. But candidly, I've got some coaching programs right now that I'm taking clients into in terms of helping you, you know, sell and scale your own premium programs and become a sold out coach. Um, and so that's something that if you do schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with us, and if you're a good fit, um, then you may be invited to join that. Um, but there's no pressure. There's no obligation whatsoever. That's why it's a 100% refundable deposit uh, for any reason. But it does, what it, what it allows us to do though, is to make sure that we're all showing up and taking that coaching call seriously. Because it's very easy for free coaching calls to not be taken seriously by either someone, well, by either side, let's just put it that way. And so we wanna make sure that uh, we treat them, a, we treat it like a thousand dollar coaching session, even though it's technically free. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. just, to, just to give an example, like real life example yeah. from my business of the effectiveness of serve calls done with a servant heart, which, you yeah. know, 
we have, you know, that's part of the problem is a lot of us feel squidgy about selling on yeah. things. So this is a different approach that takes that away because it is all based on serving them. The last five serve calls I've done, I've closed every single one of them. And that was about $12,000 in sales. And that's for your own program, just to be clear. Not you mm -hmm. also, because you're also a coach on my team. So I want to make sure that mm -hmm. that's clear. Like, yeah, my uh, that's something that's, yeah, that's amazing. You know, and then so um, I have, yeah, I mean, I have clients who have zero sales experience. And once they learn how to implement the serve call approach, um, then on average, I would say my clients generally have like a 40 to 60% conversion rate in terms of selling premium programs on a coaching call. That's actually kind of fun and effortless. Um, and everybody walks away going, wow, that was such a great experience. And then uh, one of my clients has a 100% close rate so far uh, because everybody who's he's met with has, if they have not joined his uh, premium program, then they've joined one of his other programs because he just had a conversation with them to say like, oh, you know what? If you're not getting fit for that, what about this membership over here? And it becomes sort of a, a really good opportunity to talk to your target customer. And this is someone who I'm talking, thinking about right now. Well, Mike Vardy, I'll just go ahead and say what I'm thinking about right now, who has this 100% close rate so far. He's actually been, he's had a podcast, you know, called The Productivityist, and he's been an author, and he's had an audience for about a decade in the space, and he has a pretty sizable audience. But he told me, he said, man, like, I didn't realize how important it was to have serve calls, because now he's talking to his subscribers and his customers. They're not just people subscribed to a list. They're not just people listening to the podcast. They're real-life human beings. I mean, Tina and Sharon, you two that are on camera right now, I know there's other people listening in as well. Like, we've had one, we've had one of the conversations. I know who you are. You're real-life human beings to me. You know, it's like... Um, I'm not saying anyone else is not a human being, um, yeah, but but some of you that I haven't talked to before, like Raphael, uh, like like Brian, uh, and I could go down and list others, but I don't want to start calling out names that we haven't talked before. It's just harder to connect, right? Because it's like, you know, it's it, there's just this barrier that digital marketing creates, and serve calls allow you to um, overcome that by meeting one on one. So um, I'm I'm going to stay on for Q and A as long as we've got questions. But I, and I know there's some of you still here, so that means you're still curious, but I want to know what's on your mind, right? Please let me know in the chat or jump on camera and raise your hand um, in terms of what questions do you have about how to apply this to your business, about how to build your online education business, uh, because I'm here to serve you. Um, so we can keep talking about whatever we think is useful or interesting, but I'm at this point more interested in hearing from you in terms of, um, you know, what's your question? How can I help you? So, yeah, what's your question? Thank you, Sharon. Appreciate it. Glad you're here. Um, all right, Annette, what other questions do we have? Okay, let's see here. Um, do I need to write a book first or would it be useful if I wrote a book first? Oh, uh, no. What's that? <laughs> that's good straightforward simple yeah um no i mean it, a book is a phenomenal gateway product it's incredibly effective for creating customers i mean i have people who i've never met and when we talk they say i've read both of your books and i listened to the audiobook twice for survive and thrive so it's like before we've ever met there's a lot of built up trust there's a lot of built up uh just shared language honestly it's incredibly useful for connecting so gateway products books are a phenomenal gateway product and if you're interested in that by the way i do have some free author training available because I partner with selfpublishing.com. I have a whole free course on uh, how to write, publish, and market your book. So if you're interested, let me know. We can get you that. Um, but also, like, if you're going to write a book, I recommend working with selfpublishing.com. That's why I work with for my books. But this is not about that. Just to come back to the question. If you don't have a premium program in place, we are already selling customers into it. That's your first priority. Everything else has to wait. So including Yeah, because that, that can actually help you clarify what should and shouldn't be in that book. Yes. Actually, Mike Barty, who I mentioned earlier, it's a great example of he's in the process of finishing a book. And then he went through my program and we launched a premium program. We launched his, his group coaching program. And he was like, oh, I need to write this other book. So he already knows the next book he's writing, but he's almost done with the first one. So he's finishing that one. But it's like, actually, it's the wrong book. Like he's realized, he's like, I'm going to finish this book. He has a publishing contract. He's like, I'm going to finish it. But he knows it's already not the book that's going to drive his program. So to give an example here, his next program, or sorry, his, his premium program is focused on, uh, let me see if I can re re remember his 10x promise. It's called Professional Night Owls. Um, and it's about how to accomplish your most meaningful work without fighting your body clock. And so now he knows, oh, I need to write a book that's called Later. And it's about night owls. It's about how 
It's about if you're driven biologically to get work done later in the day or the afternoon or the evening, then but you're living in the world of early birds, how do you do that? That's the book that's going to get him clients for his group coaching program. That's not the group book that he's almost done writing. It's called Time Crafters, I think it's called. Um, so he's still going to write that book. It's still going to be a good book, but you know he's almost done with it. But uh, yeah, the the book should wait until you have the premium program in place. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of the same uh, oops mistake when someone builds out an entire course and then puts it out there, and yeah. then you find out that actually, when it comes to the real world, I need to redo three quarters of it. Yeah, my the the question that I I drew, when we did this Q and A's, one of the questions that I got one time was, "Hey, it's about time to renew my uh, it's about time to renew my Kajabi account, and I've been paying for it for a full year and haven't made a single sale. Should I renew it?" It's like, oh, that question hurt, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah. You know, another thing too that um, we hear all the time from people is they, they get it in their head. Okay, even if they say, I'm convinced what you're saying, this premium product, I'm going to go for it, but I'm not going to have serve calls. I'm not going to do things until I have the whole program built. Yeah, exactly. Um, that would be a waste of time and money and energy. <laughs> you know, it's the same, it's the same exact thing. It's like, um, you actually want to sell a program where you're really selling a promise and you're building it as you go, because what you'll find is that if you, is that you'll, you'll have an outline for the whole thing of what you're going to teach in the 60 days, but a couple of weeks in you realize, oh, actually this is not where people are getting stuck. I need to change course a little bit. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Do, do we have any other questions on that? I think I haven't seen anyone's come in. No, nope, probably... I think that that's okay. all of them for now. Well, we will consider all the cues aid. <laughs> but if you have other questions, then please um, schedule a coaching call. And beyond that, um, please email, uh, just send me an email at heyajamis.com if you have any other questions we haven't covered today. But thank you so much for tuning in and uh, keep up the good work. We'll talk soon.